You think Jim Acosta was the first reporter to rattle a president's chains? Bet a lot of you are old enough to remember at a news conference during Watergate when President Nixon asked Dan Rather, are you running for something? And Rather responded, no, sir, Mr. President, are you? Sam Donaldson was a thorn to presidents, both Democrat and Republican alike. He tells a story of touring an open manure pit in India with President Carter. Sir, if I fell in there, would you pull me out? Donaldson asked the president. Certainly, Sam, after a suitable interval, Carter responded. Ask both Obama, both Bushes, both Clintons for that matter, whether they believe the press corps has always been fair to them and you'd get a big bipartisan no. But none of them revoked a reporter's credentials. And joining us for more are Sam Roberts, the former national editor of CBS News, State Representative Julio Gonzalez, and joining us by Skype from Washington is Jim Williams, Washington Bureau Chief for Fox News for News Talk Florida, I mean. And but first, t with tonight's poll question, let's go to ABC7 digital producer Chloe Convoy. Chloe. Alan, today I asked the following question to our viewers on Facebook. Should the White House or President be able to dictate which journalists are allowed to attend White House press events? The poll has over 1,500 votes and about 90 comments. Be sure to cast your vote before the end of the show and share some of your comments with us. Coming up later, I will share some of the Facebook comments with you and reveal the final poll results. Alan, back to you. Chloe, thank you very much. And we should tell viewers, um, Sam, welcome to the show. Sam was my boss at CBS News <laughs> a long time ago when I was a, a desk assistant ago. on the uh, national assignment desk. Sam, you were the national editor when, <coughs> when I was there, which means you were the not only my boss, you were the boss of CBS's White House correspondents. And I'm really interested and what your take is about this controversy, not big picture, but also what Jim Acosta actually did. Well, you mentioned the Dan Rather incident. That was, uh, what, about 73 or yep. so. Uh, at that time, I was a producer on the evening news and, you know, working stiff. But uh, many of us, myself included, thought Dan had gone over the line with that. And... <clears throat> Uh, what happened, it, it was at a convention of the National Association of Broadcasters. And uh, Nixon had a news conference with all these broadcasting executives there. And <clears throat> Dan introduced himself as was the custom in those days, introduce yourself uh, in, before you ask a question of the president. And he said, uh, Dan Rather, CBS News, Mr. President. <clears throat> and he got a great deal of applause. And that prompted Nixon's, oh, are you running for something? And Dan said, as you said, uh, no, sir, are you? I thought he went over the line. But Nixon never, the Nixon people who hated rather, and there's some evidence that even the plumbers went after uh, Nixon, uh, after no. rather during Watergate, they never considered uh, to any appreciable degree the idea of banning Dan Rather from White House coverage. And, and Julio, I want to ask you about that um, because, I mean, that's true. I mean, back in those days, uh, the tension between the White House and the press corps was um, as maybe as uh, even more incredible than, than it is today. But what's your take on, on Jim Acosta, what he did, and the bigger picture of whether um, he should have been suspended. Well, I'll tell you what Dan Rather didn't do. Dan Rather did not refuse to hand over the mic when he was asked to hand over the mic. And so I think that one of the questions that you asked at your, at your introduction was whether the president can remove somebody because he doesn't like that reporter. The answer to that question is absolutely no, or at least he shouldn't. But what I saw, what I saw in this event was a reporter that got belligerent, was not responding to the to the president's repeated firm requests to hand over the mic and, and resisted a staffer in so doing. Let's take one more look at that actual incident. I think we have it. That's not an invasion. Honestly, I think you should let me run the country, you run CNN. Right. And if you did it well, your ratings would be ask, much better. If I, if I may okay, ask one enough. question, Mr. President, if I, if I may ask one more question, are you worried about That's enough. That's enough. Mr. President, I, that's well, enough. That's asked, enough. Pardon me, ma'am. Mr. President, me. that's enough. Mr. President, I, one of the Peter, questions I may ask on, on the Russia investigation, are you concerned that 
that you may have I'm not concerned about anything with the Russian investigation because it's a hoax. Are you That's worried? enough. Put down the mic. Mr. President, are you worried about it? Uh, that was the incident from uh, last week. I want to bring Jim Williams in. Uh, Jim, you have also been a White House correspondent, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, during the Clinton administration. What was your take? I think at the end of the day, um, like Sam had said and, and uh, Julio had said, I don't think he should, uh, he meaning the president, should be able to pick and choose who he wants in the press corps. Uh, Part and parcel, if you've followed this uh, situation between uh, Jim Acosta and President Trump, is you know there, there's been a, an ongoing thing where from the rallies to each press conference, it's uh, Acosta has been in, in many regards Trump's foil, and they've had these back and forths on many occasions. So there is, uh, I think, the president in some ways draws from uh, from his you know, uh, his, I'm not going to say dislike, but uh, certainly his slight disdain, if you will, for how Jim Acosta does it. But at the end of the day, I, I don't think what Jim did was worthy of getting uh, his credential pulled. We have to take a quick break. We'll have much more on freedom of the press in a moment, so stay with us. Don't allow your weight to threaten your health or control your future. Excess weight or obesity can cause emotional and physical health risks. But you can take control. The Your Weight Matters campaign offers free resources and tips to help you measure and understand your weight. Take the Your Weight Matters Challenge. The free toolkit prepares you to speak with a healthcare provider about your weight. Your weight does matter. Take the challenge and take control today. This is an important message for anyone with Medicare. You may be eligible for an all-in-one Medicare plan that combines hospital, medical, and prescription drug coverage together with extra benefits that may include dental, vision, hearing aids, and much more. Some of these plans have a $0 monthly premium regardless of your income. That's right. For one low plan premium, or in some cases a $0 premium, you may be able to get coverage for your hospital visits, doctor appointments, prescription drugs, routine dental care, eyeglasses and contact lenses, hearing aids, and possibly more. Today may be the first time you've heard about this type of Medicare plan. The advisors at the Medicare.com helpline are licensed insurance agents who will explain more when you call. Call now to see if you qualify. Call the number on your screen now. Call now to see if you qualify for these benefits. You worked hard for your Medicare. Now is the time for your Medicare to work hard for you. Not affiliated with or acting on behalf of any government agency or program. at every Gettle location. Over 3,000 new vehicles, over 1,000 used vehicles on clearance right now at Gettle.com. And Gettle Pre-Owned Certified Plus means buying with peace of mind. Get credit help, fast cash for your car, and year-end clearance prices right now at a Gettle dealership near you. Gettle's got it. At Gettle.com. Christmas Traditions by LuxArt Silks, where more is merrier. Make your holidays sparkle with style. Browse our amazing showroom, cute collectible cottages, and beautiful Christmas displays. Find the inspiration, selection, and quality you need to deck the halls merry and bright. Christmas Traditions also features the area's largest selection of quality pre-lit Christmas trees. Every size, shape, and color, and plenty of decorations to make your home shine for the holidays. Christmas Traditions by LuxArt Silks, where more is merrier. Visit us on New 301, just a quarter mile north of University Parkway. Tomorrow at 5 on ABC7, your Suncoast News. How a smartphone app could save your life if you're having a heart attack in HealthSmart. Tomorrow at 5 on ABC7, your Suncoast News. We're here for you. Get local news and information from the team you trust. Like ABC7 WWSB on Facebook to stay connected to the Suncoast. Welcome back. We are talking about CNN's lawsuit against the president and White House after the press credentials of Chief White, Chief White House correspondent Jim Acosta was suspended indefinitely. And joining us for more are Sam Roberts, the former national editor of CBS News, State Representative Julio Gonzalez, and joining us by Skype from Washington is Jim Williams, Washington Bureau Chief for News Talk Florida. So we were talking uh, during the break, and, and Julio, one of the questions I wanted to ask to you is the White House explanation for this has, has shifted. Okay. 
in the days after, they said it was because Acosta touched the intern trying to take the mic away. Now in court today, they argued that he was disruptive or, and the president has the prerogative of deciding who is there and who is not. Correct, and, and I think today's, today's uh, briefing, the language has changed into something that's more legalese and more consistent with prior court's opinion in order to play off the court's languages. But, you know, I remember Dan Rather when, when uh, we've been talking a lot about the Dan Rather. You're Rather's, that old too? Yeah, I, I'm <laughs> old enough to have read his book as it came out. And I remember Dan Rather talked about the control the president has of the White House press conferences. He had complete control. He had a chart. He had a map. He knew exactly who, who was going to ask kind of what. You don't know exactly what he's going to ask, but you knew the topics. And he would direct the, the forum. And for the president to now, to make the argument that the president can now be subverted in not being able to direct the flow on the conduct of a White House press conference, I think flies in the pace of tradition. Uh, you know, Sam, we were talking during the break. Uh, you know, I was watching Helen Thomas today, her greatest hits. If people remember her, the great UPI reporter, uh, she gave a hard time to every president from Obama to Kennedy. Uh, some of them are really tough questions. I remember Obama didn't even want to take her questions for a good long time. Uh, but your position is that that comes with the territory. Well, it should come with the territory. The White House has absolutely the right to limit a reporter's access in terms of security or just uh, available space in the room. And that's why we have pools in the White House, right? <coughs> Where the, everybody shares the uh, pictures coming out of one camera that's allowed in. That's fine, that's part of the territory. But to single out a reporter because uh, you don't like them. That doesn't happen. And I got to tell you that the only time that we ever worried about that sort of thing happening with a reporter was in, <coughs> when in dealings with foreign governments that were uh, totalitarian governments. But I got to say, uh, Bob Woodward, the great Watergate reporter, yeah. uh, just made comments that basically said that the situation um, should result in more reporters actually doing more reporting uh, and, and not, you know, what Acosta is doing, which is uh, making himself the, the center of the story. I mean, is, has there been an element of that? Well, uh, I personally have no use for what I see on the 24-hour channels, and I'm talking about all three of them. Uh, they don't cover the news, they talk about the news. And that's part of the reason why a guy becomes the story. Uh, it's in the nature of the beast. I hate watching television news now because of that. Right. Uh, live coverage. Uh, we're getting off the topic here of no, Acosta. No, and, and I want to get to that. Okay. Uh, I, I also want to bring Jim Williams in here. And uh, Jim, again, as somebody who used to cover the White House, Bob Woodward's criticism is that Jim Acosta has made himself the story instead of just covering the story. I would never um, contradict, contradict uh, Bob Woodward, um, one of the reasons I got in this business. But I think Bob, you know, in the situation of what happened with Acosta, right, there is a process, and Sam I'm sure knows this, that if they felt that, that um, that Acosta was out of line, uh, there is a grievance process by which Sarah Sanders could have filed a, a report with the White House Press Corps Association, and they could have handled it in that manner. And that's happened numerous times. So they had a, a, a recourse to go uh, rather than pulling his credential. Um, obviously, I read what Bob said, and um, he's entitled to his opinion. I don't particularly agree with him in this point. Okay, our, our conversation on the freedom of the press continues right after we get a check on the first alert forecast with Chief Meteorologist Bob Harrigan. Bob. Well, interesting conversation you're having right there. Uh, what uh, interesting is that the weather's going to be changing big time. So grab your jackets, grab your sweaters. You're going to need them not so much tomorrow, but especially on Friday morning, Saturday morning, low temperatures, low 50s. We haven't seen that in a while. So 
Again, uh, we're expecting showers and even a few thunderstorms uh, during the late night hours and during the early morning hours on Thursday. As a result of a double barrel low pressure areas, uh, it's actually one here and one here, they're going to move up along the eastern seaboard and cause all sorts of headaches for travelers tomorrow and on in through it looks like Friday as it works its way to uh, the northeast United States. But for us, we're going to see colder air moving on in after a pretty warm fall thus far. It's going to feel more like winter, I think, on Friday with highs only getting up into the upper 60s in places and a bit of a wind too will make it feel colder. You can see an intense line of storms developing off in the Gulf. Right now it appears that all the rough weather will stay offshore. However, we have had some pretty heavy storms developing now as a result of the daytime heating today. Upper 80s, that was the high today, 89 degrees at the Sarasota Bradenton Airport. That actually tied a record high temperature uh, for today two record highs this week thus far, but we can say goodbye to the 80s for a while as a result of uh, again this colder air filtering in behind this area of low pressure uh, where it's uh, rather intense out there. Lots of lightning, heavy rainfall there and in North Manatee County, the rainfall rates up to uh, two inches an hour. Uh, it's not sticking around for an hour, so we're not going to see that kind of rainfall total, but just gives you an indication how uh, heavy the downpours have been now near to Duet and now in to Arcadia as well. Not much in Northport, all of it's kind of offshore, but we're watching this boundary right here. This boundary is an outflow boundary which will travel off to the west northwest and could kick off some other showers west of I-75. We are definitely going to see some rainfall late tonight and tomorrow morning. It doesn't appear that we're going to see the uh, strong to severe storms. Uh, the dynamics just aren't there right now, but uh, we'll keep an eye on it. Nonetheless, there's one low and another one right there. They're going to kind of move up along the mid Atlantic coast states and cause all sorts of headaches uh, for some heavy snow for, uh, snowfall there. Also into Ohio, look at kind of a mix of rain, snow, freezing rain, and into Michigan as well, mainly snowfall. And then another little clipper system comes down and brings another dusting of snow on into Saturday across parts of the uh, Great Lakes. Now for us, we're going to see high pressure build in. Should be a delightful weekend ahead as a result of that high pressure ridge building in lots of sunshine for Saturday and Sunday. Temperatures tomorrow will start off in the low 70s. That's warm or well above average and will pretty much stay right there. We're not going to really warm up too much and then we'll start to go down in the afternoon where typically our temperatures have been going up. That's a result of that north wind which will be in play. Uh, lows to start the morning off will be in the low 70s. We'll warm up tomorrow as I said only into the low 70s but Look at the cooler temperatures over the panhandle. 40 degrees at 10 o'clock in the morning over Pensacola. For boaters tomorrow, not the best boating weather either. Small craft advisories will be in effect. Rip current advisories for area beaches. And it uh, looks like uh, the water temperature now at uh, 80 degrees will go down into the mid-70s by, it looks like, I would say Sunday or Monday. It's the extended forecast. Slight chance for showers tomorrow morning after sunrise. That'll be at around 20% as the actual cold front uh, moves on through. There's the low, 52 on Friday, high of only 70 on fr uh, Friday, and then 75 and 76 respectively over the weekend. Looks to be pretty mild as far as that goes. Al will be back with his guests right after this. Stick around. Since 1847, the Grand Hotel has earned a worldwide reputation for elegance and hospitality. Now the Grand has been transformed with reimagined rooms and suites and exceptional fine dining and meeting spaces. The spa is more luxurious and Championship Golf will test your game, all overlooking beautiful Mobile Bay. The Grand Hotel Golf Resort and Spa, timeless elegance transformed. For reservations, visit Grand1847.com. This is an important message for anyone with Medicare. You may be eligible for an all-in-one Medicare plan that combines hospital, medical, and prescription drug coverage together with extra benefits that may include dental, vision, hearing aids, and much more. Some of these plans have a $0 monthly premium regardless of your income. That's right. For one low plan premium, or in some cases a $0 premium, you may be able to get coverage for your hospital visits, doctor appointments, prescription drugs, routine dental care, eyeglasses and contact lenses, hearing aids, and possibly more. Today may be the first time you've heard about this type of Medicare plan. The advisors at the Medicare.com helpline are licensed insurance agents who will explain more when you call. Call now to see if you qualify. Call the number on your screen now. Call now to see if you qualify for these benefits. You worked hard for your Medicare. Now is the time for your Medicare to work hard for you. Not affiliated with or acting on behalf of any government agency or program. Xfinity XFi, a more powerful way to stay connected. It gives you super fast speeds for all your devices. Enhanced coverage. 
and lets you control your network with the XFi app. It's the ultimate Wi-Fi experience. Xfinity XFi. Simple, easy, awesome. Get started with Xfinity Internet for just $29.99 a month for 12 months. Plus, ask about XFi pods for even more coverage. Click, call, or visit a store today. Want to know a secret? If you're looking for the best selection of area rugs at an unbelievable price, the only place you need to look is Rugs is Art. I know what you're thinking. Expensive, right? Wrong. Rugs is Art has the largest selection of area rugs on the west coast of Florida in a variety of styles with 8 by 11 area rugs starting at $199. Largest selection, personalized service, and unbelievably low prices. You'll find it all at Rugs is Art. Rugs as Art, Sarasota's only area rug superstore. All hands on deck. What's up? I want to point out three tips for using the home computer more safely. Point away. First, stop. Make sure your software is up to date and that you've password protected your computer's login and Wi-Fi connection. Next, think before visiting a site, opening attachments, or clicking on links. Then connect, knowing you're helping make the web safer for you and for everyone. Make Stop, Think, Connect part of your daily online routine. Whee! <laughs> Welcome back. We are talking about CNN's lawsuit against the president and White House after the press credentials of Chief White House correspondent Jim Acosta were suspended indefinitely. And joining us for more are Sam Roberts, the former national editor of CBS News, State Representative Julio Gonzalez, and joining us by Skype from Washington is Jim Williams, bureau chief for News Talk Florida. But first, tonight's poll question, and here's ABC7 digital producer Chloe Convoy. Chloe. Thank you, Alan. Earlier tonight, we asked our Facebook viewers, should the White House or president be able to dictate which journalists are allowed to attend White House press events? We've had tons of comments on our Facebook poll, and here is what some of you had to say. June says, absolutely rude jerks should be banned, and there are more who should be gone. They are not there to make news. They are there to find out what is happening. They are there to advance their own agenda. On the other hand, Jonathan says, so let me get this straight. A reporter asks a question about a statement that was made by the president using a president's wording verbatim and the reporter is called rude and the press pass is revoked. Isn't that journalism 101? I vote no. Coming up later, I will reveal the final poll results. Alan, back to you. Chloe, thank you. We are just getting warmed up. Our conversation about freedom of the press will continue with our guests after a quick break, so stay with us. This is an important message for anyone with Medicare. You may be eligible for an all-in-one Medicare plan that combines hospital, medical, and prescription drug coverage together with extra benefits that may include dental, vision, hearing aids, and much more. Some of these plans have a $0 monthly premium regardless of your income. That's right. For one low plan premium, or in some cases, a $0 premium, you may be able to get coverage for your hospital visits, doctor appointments, prescription drugs, routine dental care, eyeglasses and contact lenses, hearing aids, and possibly more. Today may be the first time you've heard about this type of Medicare plan. The advisors at the Medicare.com helpline are licensed insurance agents who will explain more when you call. Call now to see if you qualify. Call the number on your screen now. Call now to see if you qualify for these benefits. You worked hard for your Medicare. Now is the time for your Medicare to work hard for you. Not affiliated with or acting on behalf of any government agency or program. Introducing the ABC7 First Alert Weather Tracker. This all new mobile weather lab is just one more way. The team you trust is keeping you ahead of the storms. The ABC7 First Alert Weather Tracker. Sponsored by Mr. Sparky, America's on-time electrician. Women have shed their blood in defense of America since the dawn of the Republic. These were the women who first saw poison gas. Their sacrifices are profound. Women are in combat. And their noble accomplishments largely ignored. The giant fireball landed in my lap and I was hit by an RPG. Unsung Heroes, the story of America's female patriots. Gender has nothing to do with it. If you can do it, do it. An inspiring saga of perseverance and triumph. Sunday at 10 on ABC7. Celebrate New Year's Eve at the Van Ways. Madison's presents the Sweet Caroline Tour, a Neil Diamond concert celebration starring the number one Neil Diamond performer in the world, Jay White. Hey, Caroline. 
Proceeds benefit Sarasota's Parkinson Place and the Parkinson Research Foundation in their first ever community fundraiser. Individual tickets and full access VIP packages available now at vanwazel.org. Space is limited. That's vanwazel.org. So I kind of grew up all across the country. I come from five generations of military men. My dad is still active duty. My grandpa is retired Marines. I like going for runs with my dog. I love, you know, taking her out to the dog beach over in Venice. There are so many things here to do on the Sun Coast. My goal every day when I come into work at ABC7 is to tell your stories, give you that major local news and those details that you really care about. I'm Jacqueline Matter and I'm here for you. Being empowered starts with getting informed, looking closer. One in eight women will be diagnosed with breast cancer in her lifetime. But many of us don't know there are different types of breast cancer with different characteristics. That was me. Learning about the specifics of my diagnosis gave me the confidence to make informed treatment decisions with my doctor. This meant everything to me and my family. So take another look. Ask another question. Learn more at notonetype.org. Download the all-new ABC7 First Alert weather app now. You're watching ABC7 News at 7.30. Welcome back. We are talking about CNN's lawsuit against the president and White House after the press credentials of Chief White House correspondent Jim Acosta were suspended indefinitely. Joining us for more are Sam Roberts, the former national editor of CBS News, State Representative Julio Gonzalez, and joining us by Skype, Jim Williams, Washington Bureau Chief for News Talk Florida. And we should note that uh, Julio, is you're not only an orthopedic surgeon, but you are also an attorney. So let's talk about the legal case uh, that went to court today. The judge is going to make some kind of ruling tomorrow. This is what CNN's attorney had to say earlier today. And it's really a classic, uh, First Amendment viewpoint content-based discrimination against speech, and we can't have the White House or government officials arbitrarily tossing people out of the White House or other government facilities just because they don't like what they're saying or what they're reporting. That's right. what happened here. That violates the First Amendment. So Julio, comment to that. Can a president or a White House pick which reporters are allowed to cover them? Well, they do. They do all the time because by virtue of the fact that there's 2,000 or so reporters that have access to the White House have had that hard pass, and they have to pick 50. And then within that 50, they have to pick which reporter is the one that's going to be given the opportunity to ask a question and when, they, when the president moves to the next reporter. I think the, the, the question of a First Amendment right here is, is kind of hollow because the ability uh, to report is not being inhibited. The, the ability to voice an opinion is not being inhibited. But the president has sole discretion, essentially, to, to decide how he's going to run a meeting. And if somebody gets disruptive in that matter, I think he's going to have sole discretion to, to castigate him. Sam. But that doesn't uh, speak to the issue of revoking his credentials to go into the White House altogether, well, which I is the real issue here. Uh, this, I'm not a lawyer. I knew Floyd Abrams when I was in New York. The foremost First Amendment lawyer and probably in the history of the country, he says CNN's got a great case here. So I'll defer to him on that. But I would, I would also defer to Jim about the procedures of how people get into that White House news conference. And the reason I ask that is because about 10 years ago, uh, I must have been during Obama, maybe it was George W. Bush. Uh, they went through the list of all of those people who had White House credentials. And there were a lot of people who didn't deserve them. And they were weeded out. I could tell you a couple of stories that I personally know about of people who just didn't deserve to have White House press credentials. And they'd go along on the foreign trips and they'd go traveling and all that stuff. But they weren't real journalists. Uh, my, my point here is, sure, the White House does have some uh, uh, authority over, over who sits in that room, but there are long-standing customs in that room. Who sits in which chair? Who asks the first question? Uh, for years and years and years, it used to be the Associated Press right. uh, person did. But Jim, let me ask you this, because <laughs> There were stories that during the Obama presidency, initially he did not want Fox in the, the room and organizations like CNN and the other networks uh, weighed in and said, you have to. 
Back in the days when CNN first came into the picture, the broadcast networks tried to keep CNN out of the, the, uh, the White House press office. Uh, but you know they went to court then, and the, a federal court ruled that you have to allow them in. So this is not totally new territory, is it not? No, you're absolutely right. Um, to Sam's point, um, with regard to how it gets done, there is a there's a give and take between the White House Press uh, Association. Otherwise, you know they're the folks who uh, you have to apply to them first before you can actually get a credential. In my case, I was the first blogger actually working for Prodigy at that time. Prodigy was an online service. You remember AOL, Prodigy, and such. Uh, they granted me after three different uh, uh, attempts the opportunity to be one of the first bloggers, if you will, to be involved in there. I didn't, uh, uh, you know, Helen Thomas at that point in time always got the first question. There wasn't any question about it. Uh, Sam was absolutely right. There's a pecking order. There's assigned seats. Um, and so the White House uh, uh, Correspondents Association, along with uh, the, the press shop at uh, the White House, no matter who the president is, does go over the list and, and decide who gets for what. And they did call a lot of people out of there who, who no longer really deserved it. Uh, and, and one final point to your point on uh, Fox uh, and the, the Obama situation. He didn't pull the credential, he just didn't ask him questions. So CNN and MSNBC and a number of other news outlets went to uh, the press shop and said, look, you know, come on. These people are trying to do their job and let them ask questions and for God's sake, answer, you know, answer them. So there is a collegiality among the people within the White House press corps. And hopefully, you know, there's a, um, a goal that everybody's working in the same direction. I, I want to return to, to the point that Bob Woodward was making in, in that interview, Sam, that he's basically saying that there's more talk going on in terms of White House coverage and, and uh, the pundits you see on the, the, uh, the other networks rather than actual reporting. And, and if there's any kind of criticism of, of places like CNN, uh, NBC, or, and even Fox is they don't break the big stories about Russia or whatever. They, they take the reporters from the New York Times or the Washington Post to come in, let them tell them what they, what they uncovered, and then they just talk about it for hours. And is that part of the basic problem here? It's the basic problem. Uh, reporting is expensive. You know, I worked for the New York Times for three years after I left CBS. And I was absolutely astonished to find that the New York Times thought nothing of detaching a reporter or more than one reporter to work on a particular story for months at a time with nothing in the paper. Just keep working. There was one that was going on when I joined the Times, had been going on for a year. Three reporters detached to do nothing but this story. Well, there's nobody who can match the New York Times for that, uh, you know, that kind of thing, and television can't do it. And, and Julio, the, 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 the question, uh, Julio, the, the question would be, you know, <coughs> Reporters who cover this president and who may have also been covering Obama or Clinton or G George W. Bush or, or uh, uh, Clinton before that have perspective of the differences between the administrations and the actual people who are president. Shouldn't that be part of the context in terms of covering this president who is so different than his predecessors? Well, I think it's, it's up to, you know, part of the responsibility of the reporter is to is to get to know his or her subject and accommodate to the different varying personalities. So I think, yeah, it, it does come into the discussion. But I want to just mention one point, and that is that, look, we keep talking about how to get into the White House, to, to the press conferences. But really, this discussion that we're having right now is how you get excused out. And um, although a lot of the rules may apply, and, and Jim Williams mentioned some about a, a procedure, that procedure is informal. And the question really is, does the president, when somebody becomes unruly and bluntly and grotesquely disobeys a directive from the president to continue the flow of the meeting, can the president remove those credentials? Right, let's take a break. Let's go right now to a final check on tonight's Facebook question with ABC7 digital producer Chloe Convoy. Chloe. Alan, tonight we asked our Facebook viewers, should the White House or president be able to dictate which journalists are allowed to attend White House press events? 
We had a total of 1,600 votes and over 90 comments. 53% of you said no, the White House or President should not be able to dictate which journalists are allowed to attend White House press events. And 47% of you said yes, the White House or President should dictate which journalists are allowed to attend these events. Alan, back to you. All right, Chloe, thank you. We're going to be back for final thoughts in just a moment, so stay with us. Happy Honda Days are here, and you're going to like the holiday clearance savings. Honda, I like it. Save on the Accord, on sale for just $249 a month. That's the North American car of the year for less than the competition. Our most impressive Honda ever, on clearance for only $249 a month, loaded with more options, including a turbocharged engine and Honda Sensing. Do not miss these Honda clearance savings this week at your local Honda dealer. There are lots of people who are confused about which Medicare plan is right for them. Hey, that's me. I barely know where to start. Well, start here with me, Karen. I'm a licensed Humana sales agent. Well, it's nice to meet you, Karen. I'm John Smith. Hi, John. At Humana, we know you're unique, so you have different needs from other John Smiths. Yeah, I've always thought so. And together, we can find a plan that's right for you. Great. I go to the doctor a couple of times a year, and I have some prescriptions, but I'm never fully sure of what's covered and what's not. With Humana's all-in-one Medicare Advantage plans, you get coverage for hospital stays, doctor visits, and Part D prescription drug benefits, all for an affordable and sometimes no monthly plan premium. Do you have any more information? Sure. I'll get a decision guide in the mail to you today. They're free. Finally, someone who understands the real me. Your health and happiness is important to us. Call or go online now to get your free decision guide. Call a licensed Humana sales agent today. This is an important message for anyone with Medicare. You may be eligible for an all-in-one Medicare plan that combines hospital, medical, and prescription drug coverage together with extra benefits that may include dental, vision, hearing aids, and much more. Some of these plans have a $0 monthly premium regardless of your income. That's right. For one low plan premium, or in some cases, a $0 premium, you may be able to get coverage for your hospital visits, doctor appointments, prescription drugs, routine dental care, eyeglasses and contact lenses, hearing aids, and possibly more. Today may be the first time you've heard about this type of Medicare plan. The advisors at the Medicare.com helpline are licensed insurance agents who will explain more when you call. Call now to see if you qualify. Call the number on your screen now. Call now to see if you qualify for these benefits. You worked hard for your Medicare. Now is the time for your Medicare to work hard for you. Not affiliated with or acting on behalf of any government agency or program. Many websites selling medication may look professional and legitimate, but the vast majority of sites selling prescription drugs are doing so illegally. Criminals use websites to sell counterfeit medications that may contain life-threatening toxins. Dot Pharmacy is a website verification program that helps you identify safe and trustworthy online pharmacies. Purchasing medicine online can be safe and easy. Just look for pharmacy to the right of the dot in website addresses. Our guests join us right now for final thoughts. And Jim, we're going to start with you in Washington. You're not a lawyer, but you've been a longtime observer of what happens in that town and what happens at the White House. Any predictions on how this is going to turn out? I think CNN wins. I think. Um Ted Olson, who is their attorney, is a solid guy. Uh, I think that, uh, that they'll come away the winner. And one last thing, and that's to Sam. Uh, Sam, you got to be proud of C uh, CBSN. It's an outstanding operation. It's a streaming service. And if you just want to see news when you're not watching ABC7, which you should be doing, but when you're not watching ABC7, watch CBSN. It's a streaming service. It's all news. It's like an old CNN, just the news all the time. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. But Jim brings up a good point, uh, Julio. Uh, the the CNN hired Ted Olson. I mean, that, we, we know Ted Olson in Florida. He represented George W. Bush during the Florida recount. This is one of the foremost constitutional attorneys sure. in the country, and he believes um, CNN has a good case. I, I, I Obviously, he does, he does because he took the case. But I got to tell you, if you look at the quality of the two write-ups, the write-ups of the, of the House staff is vastly superior to the writer to the writing of, of, uh, of the plaintiff. But I, I want to say one thing. I want to take off my hat of being the editor of the Federalist Pages, and I want to take off my hat of being a lawyer and want to argue every point. 
to just say I'm totally honored to be part of this panel today. You have an incredible <laughs> panel, and you had to be with Sam Roberts uh, and Jim Williams and something else, and the discussion has just been I, superb. I, you can see he's a politician. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that. I mean that, that from the bottom of my heart. Well, thank you very much. And, and Sam, you know, how would you sum this up in terms of what, what is at stake here? At stake is freedom of the press and the First Amendment. And, uh, I mean, it, it's just as simple as that. This, if, if Acosta remains banned from the White House, this is an encroachment on freedom of the press, period, end of story. It's going to be Acosta today, it's going to be you tomorrow, it's going to be me the next day. Anytime somebody doesn't like a reporter and gets him banned from doing his job, it's an encroachment on the free press. All right, gentlemen, we have to leave it there. Thank you very much. We want to thank our guest, Sam Roberts, the former national editor of CBS News, State Representative Julio Gonzalez, and joining us by Skype, Jim Williams, Washington Bureau Chief for News Talk Florida. When